Hello doers, welcome back. My name is Jose Ignacio. Now in this episode on our costing method series, we'll be focusing on the average costing method, which is AVCO for my acronym lovers. Now this is for evaluating the cost of our manufactured products. Now, if you missed our costing overview, make sure to check out the key concepts I covered before continuing. Now for those who already watched the costing overview, well, let's ask, what exactly is average costing? Now, this is important to remember, but average costing is a method that calculates costs by averaging the prices of purchased products that are already in stock. Now, it updates this value whenever new products are received or manufactured. Now, this approach is pretty useful when the prices of products and their components tend to change, or you source them from multiple vendors and that type of thing. In this video, I'll be creating two manufacturing orders for tables using differently priced components to illustrate how the average costing method determines the product cost. So without further ado, let's get to our database. All right, doers. so to track the cost of manufactured products, we'll begin by setting a cost on our work center to reflect hourly labor and machinery costs. So inside of the manufacturing app, make your way over to assembly line one work center. And under the costing information heading, do you see this cost per hour field? Well, as you guessed it, here we have it set to $50 since I pay Steve quite well to build tables. Lucky Steve, he has a job. Okay, next let's move on to the component cost. So in order to check that out, we're gonna hop on over here into the inventory app. Now we can see the overview report for our final product, which is the table. Now to get there, navigate to its product page. From here, we go up to products, products, table. All right. Now, once that we're here in the products general information tab, you see this cost per units right now, it's currently set to zero. Now for more different information or detailed information, we can actually just click on the bill of material smart button. And when we click on our product and then the overview smart button, boom, we have a report. Now, what does this report give us? Well, it provides information on the number of products that currently can be produced along with the cost. Now, by checking the materials I need to make this table over here via the quantity and everything, what does that tell us? Well, I see that all the required parts are in stock, and that's a very good thing. And that means that I can basically produce one table right now. And that also means that inside of the bomb cost column, we could see the cost of production for all of this as well. Now, as you could tell, that's the work center cost we set up earlier. Mm, beautiful. Now, if you check over here too, the product cost column over here tells us how much it costs to buy all of the raw materials as well. And that's kind of important. Now for the first manufacturing order, I'll be building a table using a $10 tabletop and four of those beautiful legs. Now, before moving on, let's remember, you know, this costs what? $30 because 10 and then 20 and that's 30. All right, using that photographic memory, let's create our first manufacturing order. Now, since you've definitely watched my manufacturing and one step tutorial video before, I'm going to use a MO I created in advance. So in our case, make our way over there to our operations, manufacturing order and select it. Perfect. Now, once that this MO is confirmed, I can start the work order over here by going over to the work orders tab. Now I'll say that I spent 60 minutes working on this table like a very hard worker. Now I can complete the manufacturing order, marking it as done and applying it. And when we check the table's product form, and this is where it's very cool because all the magic comes together, we see that the cost is automatically adjusted from zero to 80, which is a very large jump. Now that's really cool. But wait, there's more. Let's see what happens to the product cost when I process a second manufacturing order, because this is a very cool thing. Now this time using more expensive components. So we're gonna go back to our manufacturing orders via the breadcrumbs, which today are sourdough. And we're gonna create a new one. All right, now after I confirm this MO, red icons under reserved indicate that I don't have enough components, but that's not a problem for Stealthy Wood. I can refresh my components quickly because I set up zero, zero reordering rules. Again, if you don't know what that is, be sure to watch my replenishment tutorial. But you already saw that, right, Odoers? All right. So in our case, we're gonna go to the inventory app, operations, replenishment. And now, since the manufacturing order is confirmed, 
We can actually see the components appear on the replenishment page, reminding us to replenishment. Now, if we order four more table legs and one more tabletop, we're pretty much all set up. Now this creates a RFQ for my acronym lovers. And this basically tells us that I can process it in the purchase app. So let's go do that now. So we're gonna go to the purchase app, select it. I hear everyone's excited about DIY furniture these days. So our vendor raised their prices to double economy and whatnot per usual. Now we'll confirm this order and receive the parts so that we can make our table. Beautiful. Now, after ordering the more expensive components, the product cost on the components form is automatically updated again from five to $10. Now the cost is determined by the average price of table legs in stock. Now, since the $5 table legs were consumed, that only leaves us with the $10 ones. Boom. Now, that's what I've been talking about, oh doers. And I'm gonna show you another neat trick right now. All right, so now if we make our way back over here to the manufacturing app and going into our MOs from the operations, we've basically received the parts and I can see that the component status is available because of this nice little green status change. Now, to switch things up, we're gonna tackle this order as if we were the assembler. So we're gonna go back to the manufacturing overview and I see we have a work order ready to launch at our workstation, assembly line one. So let's select that. And it's time to do this. So we're gonna click ready. And there we have it. Now, when we want to begin assembling our table, we simply go here and to log our completed work, we simply enter the number of units built, which in our case is one. And then we select mark is done. And I wanna make a quick note that while you cannot adjust the time spent on the workstation here, we can still change it on the manufacturing order. So if we select the green back arrow over here, go back into operations and into manufacturing orders. Although the builder finished the assembly, the MO status is still as to close, which is kind of interesting since this means the MO requires a verification before it is completely marked as done. Now inside of the MO's work orders tab, you can manually change the real duration to 60 minutes in our case right here. Perfect, oh doers. Now, I wanna make a quick side note on the components tab, there's no need to manually fill in the amount of components used or quantity of produced tables because updates are automatically pulled from where O doers from the workstation, but we still need to mark the MO as done. So checking the cost analysis report over here, that's available after closing the MO as well, O doers. We're gonna be able to see that the table manufactured with pricey components costs a total of 110. Ouch, that is a lot of dollars basically right there. Now, when we check back at the table's product form over here, I see that the product cost has been updated to $95. Now, how did Odoo come up with this number? And that's kind of the interesting thing. Well, this is very important. The first table cost $80 to make, and the second table cost $110. Now, you divide the sum of the cost by two, to get the average cost of 95. Odoo did the math for us, friends, so we don't have to. It's also important here, Odooers, the average cost is updated automatically every time an MO is processed. Now this feature also applies to components, which I also have categorized under average cost. And there you have it. That's how you know how to evaluate the average cost of manufactured products. For more information on the standard price and FIFO costing methods in this case, be sure to check out the next two videos. Now, see you next time, O-Doers. Go grab a snack. <laughs>